Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate. We're back with an episode of Cheap Shots. The series is dedicated to showing you money saving habits and tricks. And on today's episode, we're going to show you guys how to paint up a squad of Palanite Enforcers for Games Workshops Necromunda. Now, what's interesting about these guys is that we were painting these guys up in a Judge Dredd inspired color palette. For those of you guys who are unfamiliar with the Judge Dredd franchise, it is from a comic book series called 2000 AD. It is a British comic book series where basically you have street judges, as they're known as, or the new face of law enforcement that travel around the mega cities of the post-apocalyptic world, and they have complete authority to do whatever they need to in order to enforce the law. And Judge Dredd has actually got a really cool looking color scheme going for it, and I thought it'd be really fun to actually apply the same color scheme to a squad of Palanite Enforcers from Necromunda, since they're pretty much in the same vein with the idea of them having unlimited authority and using excessive force. So as you can see here, this is the end result of what your Palanite Enforcer squad would look like, and by following the tips, techniques, as well as materials that we suggest with our cheapskate method. You're talking about a brand new uh, uh, total investment of $21.58, and that is assuming, of course, that you're buying everything brand new for the very first time to do this. Now, when you compare this with equivalent materials from both Citadel as well as Army Painter, you're going to end up saving a grand total of $124.27. So with that being said, let's talk about how to quickly and more importantly, cheaply paint up a squad of Paladine Enforcers for Necromunda. So the first thing you'll need to do, of course, is to assemble your miniatures. As you can see in this one, I just kind of assembled it to where basically I have a mirror image of a squad. I basically got guys armed with pistols, same thing with shotguns and concussion carbines and sniper rifles, as well as bolt guns, as well as shotguns, just because I wanted to create this kind of like mirror image squad when it came to these guys. And the nice part about these guys is you don't really worry about putting texturing on the bases because the Necromunda bases are already textured already, so that part is kind of nice. And once you're done assembling your miniatures, next thing you need to do, of course, is a prime. So when it comes to primer, I use a flat white, uh, sorry, flat black primer. I'm sorry, I usually say flat white, but this time I'm using flat black primer from Estolium. It costs $3.99 at my local Walmart, and all I do is just give the good once over with the flat black primer all over the entirety of the miniature. Now, priming does a couple of important things for your miniature painting process. The first thing that it does, it actually gives a really good texturing surface for your acrylic paints to adhere to. If you were to take acrylic paints or just put on bare plastic, unfortunately, there's not enough surface tension to keep the acrylics on the miniature, so the slightest bit of friction will rub the paint off the miniature and absolutely ruin the finish. And that's one of the key purposes that primary uh, that primer actually fulfills. A second thing that it does too is that primer also has a big impact on the vibrancy and the value of the colors that you use. Now traditionally speaking, I usually go with a flat white primer whenever I do paint jobs, but this time around though, I'm going with black. And the reason why is because black covers most of the miniatures anyway. And even though we are using an oil paint, an oil wash to, to uh, darken, down the, uh, darken down the tones of the colors, it's not gonna be that much of a problem. And the reason why is because we'd use dry brushing to brighten these miniatures prior to actually doing the oil wash. So of course you could use Chaos Black Spray from Citadel, that costs $17, which is about five times as much as the Westonian flat black, flat black Primer, and it does exactly the same thing. Now when it comes to miniatures that are primarily using a black color tone, the best thing I like to do is I like to brighten up the miniatures using various dry brushes. And the very first dry brush I actually use is Apple Barrel's Pewter Gray. You can get this stuff at your local Walmart for 50 cents. The equivalent of this from this from Games Workshop would be Slanesh Gray, which costs uh, nine times as much at $4.55. What you can do is just do a quick heavy dry brushing with this gray all over the entirety of the miniatures. Now as you can see, what this dry brushing does is a couple things. The first thing it does is it highlights all the raised surfaces of the miniatures while leaving the black primer in the recesses of the miniature as as well. This creates the illusion of death as the pigments are catching upon the raised surfaces, creating that illusion taking place. As you can see here, it actually brightened up the miniatures quite significantly and actually reveals a lot of the details that we couldn't see before. And we're going to dry brush the miniatures one more time, this time using Folk Arts Pale Gray. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. The color equivalent to this would be Othelmon Gray by Games Workshop, which runs $4.55, which is about six times as much. And as, Sorry, not five times as much. Uh, yeah, six times as much. So all you got to do real quick is just do a quick dry brushing with the pale gray over the gray that you did earlier. And as you can see, you bring up a lot of those details and really brightens up these miniatures as well. Now you might be thinking, well, Commander Cheesecake, won't these make these guys look gray? And I understand your concern, but the nice part is when we do the oil wash, the oil is going to mute down the vibrancy of the grays that we use and bring it back down to a black undercoat which is going to look really nice as well now you do have this kind of chalky pastel finish on your miniatures when you do dry brushing don't worry about that because when we get to the oil wash phase that chalkiness is going to go away and our layers are going to blend together with our colors and it's going to look really nice when it's over with 
So the very first detail we're going to pick out on these guys are their leather, leather goods. So as you can see, a lot of these guys have magazine pouches. They also have holsters as well as belts crossing their midsections. So for all those details are going to be done with leather goods. I picked down two thin layers of territorial beige by Apple Barrel Paint. It cost 50 cents on my local Walmart, and I just put two thin coats on the leather goods that I wanted to be like a brown leather color. The reason why I did this is so that way the brown leather would contrast nicely against the black nature of the uniforms. So that way it looks a lot better and a lot more color variety as well. Now the color that you'll need to use from uh, Citadel that'll be the equivalent to this would be Baylor Brown. That stuff costs $4.55, which is nine times as much as the Toro Toro Beige from Apple Barrel Paint. Now the next detail we're going to work on is on the body armor that's covering their knees, their shins, as well as their forearms, as well as elbows. And the reason why that is the case, we're going to paint those in two thin layers of holly branch, which is a nice, deep, rich green color. And the reason why we're using that color is because if you look at the Judge Dre comic books, that's usually the same kind of color that they use on their uniforms from the comic books as well. So uh, holly branch by Apple Barrel Paint costs 50 cents at my local Walmart. I just put two thin layers of this stuff on all the armor panels on the feet as well as our legs as well as their um, uh, forearms as well to give them got back that nice little contrast between the black of the uniforms as well. Now the color you would need to use from this from Citadel would be ca uh, Caliban Green which costs you $4.55 which is nine times as much. Now the next thing we're going to paint as well is some of the elements that are behind the knees as well as the arm greaves that they're wearing. For example, all the straps for the leg armor shows up from behind them on their back of their knees as well as inside their elbows. And what I decided to do with that is pick out those layers and two thin layers of English Ivy Green by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice uh, olive drab color that contrasts nicely with the black as well as the holly branch that we used before. I did this to kind of create some contrast between the brown leather goods as well as the uh, uh, straps for the armor to kind of add a little bit of contrasting colors to the black armor that we have as well. Now the color that would be equivalent to this from Citadel would be Vulcan Green that still costs $4.55 at your local game shop and it's about 9 times as much as the English Ivy Green. Also I should mention too if you look on the back of these guys too I use Holly Branch on the back armor panel on the back of their armor uh, just to make it look like it's a little bit of reinforcement on that part. So now that we're done painting up the armor that we want to have holly branch, the next thing we gotta do, of course, is a quick dry brush. And we're also gonna do a dry brush as well on all the leather goods these guys are wearing that we did earlier. Now for the armor panels that we did in green, we're gonna dry brush that in, two, in a thin layer of dry brushing from Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs 50 cents at my local Walmart. The equivalent color from Citadel would be Cyberite Green, which costs nine times as more much as $4.55. We're gonna do a quick dry brushing on the armor so that way you can see the armor panels as well as the highlighting of the armor pieces that we just did. At the same time, for the leather goods these guys have around their belts as well as our holsters and mag pouches we're going to dry brush that in a thin layer of anita's acrylic taupe gray which costs 65 cents at your local hobby lobby the equivalent to, to this from citadel would be our karth flesh and as you can see when we do a quick dry brush you can see like the individual folds of the leather the button snaps and the pouches all kinds of details that we couldn't see earlier which is the normal base coating now the LX element we're going to take care of of course is their helmets and we're going to paint this in two thin layers of anita's acrylic True Red, which costs 65 cents at your local Hobby Lobby. The equivalent color of this from Citadel would be Mephiston Red, which costs 4.55, which is nine times as much. And the reason why we're painting these helmets red is because that is the iconic helmet color for the Judge Dread characters in that series. The judges wear these bright red helmets with their black armor. It's very, very contrasting. It's one of the key features of them as well. Now, my suggestion to you actually is just to paint the entirety of the helmet in red. And the reason why that's the case is because that way, when it comes to putting the details for the black parts of the helmet, we just need those details up with some uh, paint paint as well it's much easier to put multiple colors of black on top of a red base coat than it is to put red on top of a black base coat so that's the reason why i recommend you paint the entirety of the helmet first in red and then you can just pick out the details that you want in black later on and once we put our two thin layers of this stuff on we can start working on the fine details on the helmet so as you can see here, I went back on the helmets as well and painted the negative spaces of the helmet to actually cause some contrast between the black of the armor as well as the red elements of the helmets as well. And to create those black portions, what I use is two thin layers of pavement paint by Apple Barrel Paint. This stuff costs 50 cents at your local Walmart. Uh, it's just really nice, solid black color. You can just put directly onto your guys' helmets and to bring out those details. And so that way it looks kind of nice. You got these red contrasts with the black of the armor, which looks really awesome. And I just think it's an overall really cool effect. Now, if you want to use the same color from uh, or similar color rather from Citadel you need to buy Eschen Gray which costs $4.55 which is about nine times as much. So now that we're done with most of the colors, the next thing we need to do now is start working on the fine details. We actually have a lot of these miniatures already complete up to this point. So those fine details we're going to talk about first are the gold elements that we're going to focus on. Now for the gold elements, we're going to use uh, Deco Arts Emperor's Gold. It costs 75 cents at your local Walmart. The color equivalent to this would be Retributor Armor from Citadel, which costs more than 10 times as much at $7.80. And as you can see in this photo, we're picking out the elements that we want to be in gold. So we have like these nice little chest emblems that they're wearing. 
which I imagine would be like with their badges going. We also have these really cool kind of military style epaulets on their shoulders as well, as well as the belt buckles on their harnesses. So we're picking out two thin layers of uh, metal and the uh, Emperor's Gold to bring out those elements. As you can see, it contrasts quite nicely against the black armor as well, and it looks really awesome. It's very eye-catching. It's a really cool detail that catches the attention of the uh, of the viewer. And the reason why we're using this gold color is because in the Judge Dread universe, uh, the judges actually have these huge badges as well as chains and like eagle head uh, shoulder pads and stuff. So we're creating that same kind of similar look with that motif with using the gold elements on these Pelonite Enforcers. So next, we're going to work on, of course, are all the weapons as well as other metallic accessories that these guys have on them as well. Now, for the most of the guns that these characters are carrying, like the barrels, the scopes, the magazines, we're leaving the those colors in two thin layers of gunmetal gray by Folk Art. It's a beautiful dark metal color. Costs 75 cents at your local Walmart or Hobby Lobby, and the color equivalent to that would be Lead Belcher by Games Workshop. That costs 10 times as much as $7.80. So for that silver color, we're doing things like picking out the barrels as well as the uh, guns on the scopes, the magazines. We're leaving most of the body of the weapons black because it looks very tactical we're picking out those details in that now for the other portions like for example like some of the grenades that these guys are carrying a lot of these guys are carrying like grenades on their person we're using anita's acrylic antique copper for those which costs 65 cents at your local hobby lobby the color equivalent to that from citadel would be brass scorpion which costs more than 10 times as much at seven dollars and eighty cents for that detail at the same time we're also using copper as well for things like weapon shafts for example of their stun batons uh, if you look one of the characters is carrying a stun baton in his hand so we pair the uh, shaft in that same thing with one of the uh, batons the guys are carrying on their belts as well we also pick out some of the weapon scouts and copper too uh to paint that color we use folk arts copper which costs 75 cents at your local walmart the uh, color equivalent to that would be screaming bill from citadel paint which costs 10 times more than that at seven dollars and 80 cents as well and then once we get done with all those elements the last thing we do of course is just google cool, really quick dry brushing with some anniversary silver by folk art on all the weapons that we created to create that kind of chrome kind of weather look and that stuff costs 75 cents at your local walmart the equivalent to that would be Iron Breaker by Games Workshop, which costs 10 times as much at $7.80. And once you're done with all those metallic elements on the weapons, it looks really good. Next we gotta do now is work on some of the finer details, and then we're almost done with these miniatures. And the last elements we're going to pick out for these guys for the details are the uh, the little tubes that are on some of their guns, as well as the lenses of their scopes, as well as the lenses of their helmets. Now, for their helmets, we're picking out the eyes in two thin layers of uh, King's Gold by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a rich yellow color that you can get from Walmart for about 50 cents. The color equivalent to this would be Avalon Sunset from Citadel, which costs nine times as much at $4.55. We're just going to put two thin little dots of yellow directly on the lenses of the helmets. That way, it looks like it contrasts nicely with the black and the red that we see earlier, so that way you can see those glow eye details on these enforcers and the last thing we're going to work on are the two guys in the center who have the uh, basically the um, the concussion carbines there's a nice little tube that connects the barrel of the weapon to the magazine same thing with the lenses of the long rifles on the far guys on the far right hand side and for those we're going to pick those details out in two thin layers of mermaid blue by delta serum coat you can get this at your local hobby lobby for about 65 cents the color cone to that would be for games workshops talisar blue which costs more than 10 times as much at seven dollars and eighty cents and once we're done with that detail we can start working on the bases. So for the bases of this miniature, we're going to go for like this kind of rusted metal decking that these guys are standing on. So for the bases that they're standing on, we're going to paint that in a two thin layers of gunmetal gray by Folk Art. Once again, this is the color we used earlier for the weapons that we used earlier. And we're not going to worry about it too much. We're just going to put two thin layers real quick on this. And if there's any black undercoat showing through, we're not going to really care about that too much because it'll look like it's part of the shadows or it looks like it's stained or burned or whatever the case may be. Because we're going to go for like this rusted kind of metallic base when it comes to these guys. And once we put our two thin layers of gunmetal gray, time to work on the rust detail. Now to create this rust detail, what we're going to do real quick is just dry brush it real fast with a thin layer of Tropic Orange by Apple Barrel Paint. This stuff costs 50 cents at my local Walmart. Uh, all you got to do, of course, is dry brush the parts that did metallic with this Tropic Orange to create this kind of rusty, oxidized, metallic look on top of the base of these guys are standing. Now the color you'll need to use is Luganath Orange by Apple Bar uh, by uh, Games Workshop. That costs $4.55, which costs nine times as much. And once you're done with the dry brushing, the next thing we need to do now is our oil wash. So we are using a quick paint method on our painting on this one. And usually when people do a quick paint method with an oil wash, a lot of people like to use Army Painter Strong Tone, which is a perfect product to use. It does exactly what it's advertised to do. However, it costs $32 a can, which is 
quite expensive. In my opinion, a better product would be Minwax Poly Shade Acrylic by Mission Oak. It costs only $6.99, so it's more than five times less than the uh, Army Painter Strong Tone, which is quite nice, and it does exactly the same thing. Now, the oil washing does a couple of things for us. The first thing that the oil washing does, of course, is to seep directly into the recesses of the miniature, and actually with that darker color brings a lot of those uh, details we couldn't see earlier, things like folds in the fabric, uh, the different armor panels between the different gaps in the armor paneling they're carrying, uh, the texturing in the, on the bases, I mean, all kinds of stuff that it brings out in those recesses. The same thing, second thing that the coloring does as well is it also uh, blends the transition between our dry brushes and our base coats. As you can see, that chalky appearance that we had earlier, that pastel finish that we had from the dry brushing is now entirely gone because it smoothed out dance transitions with their base coats. And the third thing that this also does as well is it mutes down the vibrancy of the colors that we used. As you can see now, instead of such being bright, vibrant colors, it's now more dark, more subdued, uh, more recessed in terms of the colors, and it looks really fantastic as well. It gives an overall beautiful finish to these miniatures. This oil wash technique really works well on black as well as red uh, color details, in my opinion, as well as metallics, which these guys have quite a bit of. On the miniatures. Now, just like Army Painter Strong Tone, Midwax Poly Shade does have polyurethane in it, so you will need to wait 24 hours for this stuff to dry and cure. And when it cures, you're gonna have a nice, hard, clear coat on all over the entirety of the exterior of the miniature, which will protect it from fading and also weathering as well, and also chipping, which is kind of nice. The only problem though is that that polyurethane does have a high gloss sheen, so if you want to, you could use a matte varnish spray in order to matte down that uh, that gloss, but that's entirely your choice. So now that we wait for the miniatures to dry, the next thing we do, of course, is put a two thin layers of Skyline by Folk Art along the rim of the bases. It's a nice grayish blue color that I use for all the Nickerman miniatures in the studio's collection. You can get this stuff at your local Walmart for about 75 cents. The color equivalent from Citadel Paints would be uh, Rust Gray, which costs $4.55 for that color. And once you're done rimming that with two thin layers, the next thing you need to do now is a spray varnish. Now this next day, a step of course isn't completely optional, but like I said before, I didn't really like that high gloss sheen that you get from the polyurethane, so what I do is I take a can of uh, real simple uh, uh a matte varnish by Cryolon Matte Spray and just put that all over the entirety of the miniature. That matte spray costs $5.99 on my local Walmart and I just do a once over real fast and mute down the sheen that we saw earlier from that high gloss finish. And of course you'll need to buy a can of Mutatorium Varnish to do exactly the same thing from Citadel which costs $17.50 in order to do it that way. And once you're done with that matte varnish you are completely done. So once again, here is the end result of what your tactical squad would look like from your Palani Enforcers. You got a beautiful tabletop standard. At the same time, we only spent $21.58 in order to do this with this beautiful tabletop standard as well. So now that we're done talking about the cheapskate method of actually painting up these miniatures, let's talk about exactly what you need to purchase from Citadel as well as Army Painter if you want to paint out your squad exactly the same we did, except by using the materials that we uh, by using their materials instead of our cheapskate materials. So with that being said, let's talk about exactly what you need to get from those companies to paint this way. So if you want to paint this up in the Army Painter Citadel method, you'll need to buy a can of Chaos Black Spray, which is going to cost you $17, followed by the colors Averland Sunset, Vulcan Green, Caliban Green, Cyberite Green, Baylor Brown, Slanesh Gray, and Eschen Gray, and all those colors cost $4.55 for those. You'll also need to buy a pot of Talisar Blue, which costs $7.80 for that, as well as Mephiston Red and Rakarth Flesh, both of which cost $4.55. You'll also need to buy a pot of Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, as well as Screaming Bill and Iron Breaker, all of which cost $7.80 for those, as well as a pot of Rust Gray and Ultimon Gray for $4.55 on that. And then finally, you need to buy a pot of Retributor Armor, which costs $7.80, and those are all the materials you need to get from Citadel. You also need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone for $32 if you wanted to do the quick oil paint method as well. Now, I did leave off the materials for the matte varnish spray because that one is quite optional, so I just left it off this list just in case you didn't want to go with that. Now, assuming that you're purchasing everything from Citadel as well as Army Painter for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $145.85 to paint up your miniatures exactly the same way we did, except using Citadel as well as Army Painter. Now, when you compare that with the cheapskate method of our materials of $21.58, and you subtract the two, we're saving you a grand total of $124.27. So the savings speak for themselves. So there you go. This is what your Palanite Enforcers will look like by using our Cheapskate method. It will be saving you a lot of money and have a beautiful tabletop standard when you're finished as well. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest and greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.